Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the rich tapestry of Irish folklore to uncover the legendary gods and mythical beings that have captivated imaginations for centuries. From the majestic Dagda to the enchanting Brigid, we'll explore the stories and symbols that have shaped Ireland's ancient beliefs. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of these powerful deities and their enduring influence on Irish culture and traditions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an adventure into the world of myths and legends. Let's get started. Dagda Dagda's origins are deeply rooted in the ancient Celtic traditions. His name, meaning the good god, doesn't imply moral goodness but rather his proficiency and skill in numerous domains. He is a master of magic, warfare, and craftsmanship, embodying the archetype of a perfect chieftain. Physically, Dagda is often depicted as a giant of a man with immense strength, wielding a massive club that could kill nine men with one blow but could also bring them back to life. This duality in his weapon symbolizes his control over life and death, a common theme in mythologies where gods wield such powers. Additionally, he is known to possess a cauldron that never runs empty, symbolizing abundance and sustenance, and a harp that controls the seasons and can manipulate emotions. Family and Relationships Dagda is a central figure in the family of the Tuatha de Danann. He is often considered the father of many of their gods and heroes. His children include Brigid, a goddess of poetry, healing, and smithcraft, and Angus, the god of love. His consort is usually the Morrigan, a powerful goddess associated with war and fate, although he is also linked to other goddesses such as Bowen, the goddess of the river Boyne. These relationships highlight his integral role in the divine hierarchy and the interconnectedness of the gods in Irish mythology. The Tuatha de Danann The Tuatha de Danann, meaning, people of the goddess Thanu, are a mythical race of gods and goddesses who are said to have ruled Ireland before the arrival of the Milesians, the ancestors of the modern Irish. The Tuatha de Danann are described as possessing great magical powers and knowledge, and they brought with them for magical treasures, the Stone of Fowl, the Spear of Luff, the Sword of Nwada, and Dagda's Cauldron. Dagda, as a leader and chieftain, plays a pivotal role in the narratives of the Tuatha de Danann. He is seen as a protector and provider for his people, embodying the qualities of a benevolent king. His wisdom and strength are crucial in their battles, especially against the Fomorians, a race of hostile beings representing chaos and destruction. The Myth of the Second Battle of Mag Twid One of the most significant myths involving Dagda is the Second Battle of Mag Twid, Moitura, a defining conflict between the two Arta de Danann and the Fomorians. This battle is a central theme in Irish mythology, symbolizing the struggle between order and chaos. In preparation for the battle, Dagda seeks to secure the support of the Morrigan, the powerful war goddess. He meets her at the River Unius, where they engage in a union that symbolizes the joining of their powers to ensure victory for the Tuatha de Danann. This act underscores Dagda's role as a figure who bridges various aspects of existence, life and death, war and fertility. During the battle, Dagda demonstrates his prowess by using his magical club and his vast strength to vanquish numerous Fomorians. His actions are crucial in turning the tide of the battle in favor of the Tuatha de Danann. The victory at Mag Twid not only solidifies the Tuatha de Danann's control over Ireland, but also reinforces Dagda's status as a paramount deity whose wisdom and power are vital to his people's survival and prosperity. Symbolism and Cultural Significance Dagda's attributes and stories are rich with symbolism. His cauldron represents abundance and the sustenance of life, a reminder of the importance of community and sharing resources. The cauldron's inexhaustible nature signifies the ideal of plenty and the generosity expected of a chieftain. His club, capable of both taking and restoring life, encapsulates the dual nature of existence and the balance between creation and destruction. This theme is echoed in his relationships with other deities, such as his consort, the Morrigan, 
who embodies the destructive aspect of war. Dagda's harp, which can control the seasons, symbolizes the harmony between nature and human existence. The ability to manipulate time and emotions through music reflects the cultural importance of bards and poets in ancient Irish society who were seen as keepers of history and tradition. Dagda in the Mythological Cycle Dagda's stories are primarily found in the Mythological Cycle, one of the four major cycles of Irish mythology. This cycle consists of tales that describe the origins and adventures of the gods and the mythical history of Ireland. Through these narratives, Dagda emerges as a multifaceted deity whose actions and decisions shape the fate of his people. One such tale involves Dagda's encounter with the Morrigan at the River Unius, where their union before the Battle of Mag Twid underscores the intertwining of their powers and the crucial role of fertility and destruction in maintaining balance. This myth highlights the interconnectedness of different aspects of life and the necessity of both creation and destruction for renewal and growth. Another significant story is Dagda's interaction with his son Angus, the god of love. In this tale, Angus tricks Dagda into giving him his home, the Brew N.A. Boyne, New Grange, by asking to stay there for a day and a night. Dagda agrees, only to realize that Angus's request means forever, as each day and night continually follow each other. This story emphasizes the cleverness and wit associated with the gods and the importance of honor and promises. Influence and Legacy Dagda's influence extends beyond mythology into the cultural and social fabric of ancient Ireland. As a deity associated with leadership, wisdom and strength, he embodies the ideals of kingship and the responsibilities of a ruler. His role as a provider and protector reflects the societal expectations of chieftains to care for their people and ensure their well-being. In modern times, Dagda remains a symbol of Irish heritage and folklore. His stories are celebrated in literature, art, and popular culture, reflecting the enduring fascination with Celtic mythology. Festivals, reenactments, and scholarly works continue to explore his character and the rich traditions associated with him, keeping the legacy of Dagda and the Tuatha de Danann alive. Brigid Brigid is often identified as a member of the Tuatha de Danann, a supernatural race in Irish mythology. The Tuatha de Danann are considered to be gods and goddesses who descended from the goddess Thanu. Brigid's parentage is distinguished, she is commonly described as the daughter of the Dagda, the chief god of the Tuatha de Danann. This lineage places her among the highest echelons of the Irish mythological hierarchy. Triple Goddess Aspect One of Brigid's most notable features is her representation as a triple goddess. This concept is central to many Celtic deities, embodying the idea of multiple facets within a single entity. For Brigid, these aspects are often interpreted as Brigid the poet, she is the goddess of wisdom, poetry, eloquence, and knowledge. In this role, she inspires bards and poets, ensuring the continuation of oral traditions and the spread of wisdom through stories and songs. Brigid the healer, she presides over healing, fertility, and midwifery. Brigid's healing powers are associated with sacred wells and springs, which were believed to have restorative properties. Her role as a healer made her a protector of women, particularly during childbirth. Brigid the Smith, as the goddess of fire and the forge, Brigid is the patroness of smiths, craftsmen, and artisans. This aspect highlights her association with creativity and transformation, symbolized by the transformative power of fire. Symbols and Sacred Objects Brigid is often associated with specific symbols and sacred objects that reflect her diverse attributes. Sacred Flame, the perpetual flame is one of Brigid's most enduring symbols. It represents her aspect as the goddess of fire, inspiration, and transformation. Historically, a group of 19 priestesses, and later nuns, tended an eternal flame in her honor at Kildare. Holy wells, wells and springs are sacred to Brigid, aligning with her healing and life-giving properties. 
Pilgrims often visited these sites seeking cures for various ailments. Bridget's Cross, this woven cross made from rushes or straw is a well-known symbol. It is traditionally made on her feast day, Imbolc, and is believed to protect homes from harm. Imbolc, Festival of Bridget. Imbolc, celebrated on February 1st, marks the beginning of spring and is closely associated with Bridget. This festival honors her role in fertility, renewal, and the return of light after winter. Imbolc rituals often include the lighting of candles and fires, symbolizing the growing strength of the sun and the promise of new life. Transformation into Saint Bridget The veneration of Bridget did not cease with the advent of Christianity in Ireland. Instead, her worship was adapted and transformed. Bridget became Saint Bridget of Kildare, one of Ireland's patron saints. Many aspects of the goddess were integrated into the saint's persona, ensuring a seamless transition between pagan and Christian traditions. Saint Bridget is credited with founding a monastery at Kildare, a site previously associated with her pagan worship. Bridget's monastic legacy The monastery at Kildare became a significant center of religion and learning. The association of Bridget with this site reinforced her enduring influence. St. Bridget's community at Kildare maintained the eternal flame, which continued to burn until the 16th century. The flame was relit in the 20th century, symbolizing the enduring legacy of Bridget in Irish culture. Bridget in modern culture Bridget's influence persists in modern times, both as a goddess and a saint. She is celebrated in various festivals, and her symbols continue to be part of Irish culture. The making of Bridget's crosses and the veneration of holy wells are still practiced, blending ancient customs with contemporary spiritual beliefs. Bridget's role in contemporary paganism In modern pagan practices, particularly within the traditions of Wicca and Celtic Reconstructionism, Bridget is revered as a powerful goddess. Pagans celebrate her attributes and seek her blessings for creativity, healing, and protection. Rituals often involve the use of fire and water, symbolizing her dual aspects as a goddess of fire and a guardian of holy wells. Luff Luffa's parentage is noteworthy in Irish mythology. He is the son of Cian of the Tuatha de Danann, a race of supernatural beings, and Ethniu, daughter of Bela, the one-eyed leader of the Fomorians, a rival group often depicted as monstrous and malevolent. This union of Tuata de Danan and Fomorian bloodlines embodies the synthesis of opposites, suggesting that Luff himself is a bridge between different realms and powers. Attributes and skills Luff is often referred to as Luff Lamharda, meaning Luff of the Long Arm, a reference to his skill with a spear, one of his primary symbols. He is depicted as a master of many crafts, earning him the epithet Samildanark, which translates to skilled in many arts. This multifaceted expertise positions Luff as a god of craftsmanship, skill, and intelligence. The myth of Luffa's arrival. One of the most celebrated stories of Luff is his arrival at the court of Nuada, king of the Tuata de Danan. Seeking entry into the court, Luff is initially denied by the gatekeeper, who insists that only those with a unique skill may enter. Luff asserts his prowess in a wide array of disciplines, warrior, harpist, poet, historian, sorcerer, physician, cupbearer, and more. When asked if he possesses any one skill surpassing all others at the court, he responds, try me, thus gaining entry by demonstrating his unmatched versatility. This story highlights Luffa's comprehensive mastery and his role as a bringer of knowledge and culture. The Battle of Mag Twid Luffa's martial prowess is prominently displayed in the Second Battle of Mag Twid, a pivotal mythological event. The two Arta de Danan, led by Luff, face off against the Fomorians. Luffa's leadership and combat skills are crucial in securing victory. His defeat of his grandfather, Bela, is particularly significant. Bela, who possesses a destructive eye capable of wreaking havoc, is slain by Luff with a slingshot, fulfilling a prophecy and symbolizing the triumph of order over chaos. 
Laf and Lunasoud. Lunasoud, one of the four major Gaelic festivals, is named in honor of Laf. Celebrated on August 1st, Lunasad marks the beginning of the harvest season and is a time of community gatherings, feasts, and games. The festival's origins are attributed to Luff instituting the games in honor of his foster mother, Tailtiu, who died from exhaustion after clearing the plains of Ireland for agriculture. Lunasad underscores Luffer's association with agriculture, fertility, and the prosperity of the land. Luff is a king and hero. In addition to his divine attributes, Luff is often depicted as a wise and just king. His reign is characterized by fairness, prosperity, and the flourishing of arts and crafts. As a hero, Luff embodies the ideal qualities of courage, wisdom, and resourcefulness, making him a paragon of leadership and heroism in Irish mythology. Symbolism and Worship Luffer's symbols, such as the spear, the sling, and the sun, reflect his diverse roles. The spear represents his prowess in battle and his ability to overcome formidable enemies. The sling, with which he defeated Baylor, symbolizes his strategic mind and his capacity to bring about necessary change. The sun is often associated with Luff, representing light, knowledge, and life-giving energy. Comparative Mythology Luffer's characteristics and stories have parallels in other Indo-European mythologies. He shares similarities with the Welsh god Lu Lord Gifs, known for his dexterity and skills, and with the Roman god Mercury, who is also associated with eloquence, trade, and multifaceted talents. These parallels suggest a shared cultural heritage and common themes in the mythologies of these ancient societies. Luff in Modern Culture Luffer's legacy extends into modern times, where he continues to be a figure of cultural and spiritual significance. Contemporary pagan and druidic traditions often celebrate Lunasad, honoring Luff as a symbol of creativity, craftsmanship, and the cycles of nature. Luffer's stories and attributes also inspire modern literature, art, and popular culture, where his image as a hero and a master of many arts endures. Morrigan. The Morrigan, sometimes referred to as Marigu or Morrigan, belongs to the Tuatha de Danann, a race of supernatural beings in Irish mythology. The Tuatha de Danann are often depicted as godlike ancestors of the Irish people who possessed magical abilities and ruled Ireland before the arrival of the Milesians. The Morrigan's name is thought to derive from the old Irish terms Mor, Great, and Regan, Queen which together translate to Great Queen. Triple Aspect The Morrigan is frequently described as a triune goddess, embodying three distinct aspects, Bad, Mocha, and Namain. This tripartite nature aligns with the Celtic tradition of triads and the concept of multiple deities representing different facets of a singular identity. Bad beat associated with battle and death, Bad often appears as a crow or raven, ominously foreshadowing bloodshed and the outcome of conflicts. In mythological accounts, she is seen hovering over battlefields, shrieking to incite fear and chaos among warriors. Mocha, this aspect of the Morrigan is linked to sovereignty and fertility. Mocha is often depicted as a horse goddess and is connected to the land and kingship. Her stories frequently involve themes of endurance and strength, such as in the tale where she outpaces the king's horses while pregnant. Namain, known as the spirit of frenzy and havoc, Namain embodies the chaos and terror of war. Her presence is said to cause confusion and madness among soldiers, further amplifying the destructiveness of battle. Role in mythology The Morrigan plays a pivotal role in several key Irish myths, particularly those involving the legendary hero C.U. Tularin and the epic narratives of the Ulster Cycle. The Tyne Bow Quaonge In the epic Tyne Bow Quaonge, the cattle raid of Cooley, the Morrigan has significant interactions with C.U. Tularin, one of the central figures in Irish mythology. She attempts to seduce him, and when he rebuffs her advances, she transforms into various animal forms, an eel, a wolf, and a cow, to hinder his progress in battle. 
Despite her efforts, Si Yu Chulerin defeats her each time. This encounter underscores the Morrigan's complex relationship with warriors, blending elements of attraction, antagonism, and respect. Later in the saga, the Morrigan reappears to see Yu Chulerin in a more prophetic role, predicting his demise. She washes his chariot and armor in a river, an act symbolizing an imminent death. True to her prophecy, see Yu Chulerin meets his end, solidifying the Morrigan's role as a harbinger of fate. The Battle of Mag Twid Another important myth involving the Morrigan is the Second Battle of Mag Twid, where the two are to Dadan and fight against the Fomorians, a race of monstrous beings. The Morrigan plays a crucial role in this battle by rallying the two Arta de Danan and using her magic to sow confusion among the Fomorians. After the battle, she proclaims victory and delivers a prophecy about the future prosperity and destruction of Ireland. This story highlights her dual role as a warrior and a prophetess. Symbolism and Interpretations The Morrigan symbolism is rich and varied, reflecting the complexity of her character and the themes she embodies. War and Death The Morrigan's association with war and death is perhaps her most prominent attribute. Her appearance as a crow or raven on battlefields is a potent symbol of death and the transitory nature of life. In many cultures, these birds are linked to the dead and the afterlife, serving as psychopomps that guide souls to the other world. Sovereignty and the Land As a goddess of sovereignty, the Morrigan is intrinsically connected to the land and its rulers. Her role in myths often involves the legitimization of kings and the fertility of the land. This aspect of her character underscores the belief in the divine right of kings and the idea that the prosperity of the land is directly tied to the ruler's favor with the gods. Prophecy and Fate The Morrigan's prophetic abilities emphasize her role as a mistress of fate. She not only predicts outcomes but also influences them through her actions. This control over destiny is a common theme in Celtic mythology, where deities often possess foreknowledge and the power to alter the course of events. Modern Interpretations In contemporary times, the Morrigan has been embraced by neo-pagan and Wiccan traditions, where she is revered as a powerful goddess of transformation, strength, and the cycles of life and death. Her multifaceted nature allows for various interpretations, making her an appealing figure for those seeking to connect with ancient spiritual practices. Nuada Nuada's name has been subject to various interpretations, often associated with the idea of sovereignty and divine rule. The etymology of Nuada is linked to proto-Celtic roots, suggesting meanings like possessor or acquirer. This connotation aligns with his role as a leader and protector of his people. The Two Arta de Danan The Two Arta de Danan, often translated as the people of the goddess Thanu, are central to Irish mythology. They are depicted as a supernatural race endowed with magical abilities, advanced knowledge, and a deep connection to the land. Nwada is their first king, embodying the archetype of the noble and just ruler. The First Battle of Mag Twid one of the most significant tales involving Nuada is the First Battle of Mag Twid, Moitura. This battle was fought between the two Arta de Danan and the Fir Bolg, the previous inhabitants of Ireland. In this epic confrontation, Nuada led his people to victory but suffered a grievous injury, losing his right hand in combat. Nuada's loss and the consequences The loss of his hand had profound implications for Nuada's kingship. According to the laws of the two Arta de Danan, a king must be physically whole and unblemished to rule. This belief underscores the importance of physical integrity and its symbolic association with the well-being of the kingdom. Consequently, Nwada was compelled to abdicate the throne. The Silver Hand The healing of Nwada's injury is one of the most fascinating aspects of his myth. Jian Sect, the god of healing, and his son Mayak crafted a silver prosthetic hand for Nwada, hence his epithet Nwada Ergetlam, or Nwada of the Silver Hand. 
This silver hand was not only functional but also imbued with magical properties, symbolizing restoration and resilience. Return to Kingship Noada's return to the throne was not immediate. His silver hand, while remarkable, did not initially meet the stringent requirements for kingship. It was only when Mayak later replaced the silver hand with one of flesh and blood that Nwada was deemed fit to rule again. This transformation illustrates the interplay between the physical and the magical, highlighting the belief in miraculous healing and the restoration of divine order. The Second Battle of Mag Twid Nwada's kingship was further tested in the Second Battle of Mag Twid, where the two Arta de Dan and faced the formidable Fomorians, a race of monstrous beings. This battle is a cornerstone of Irish mythology, representing the struggle between order and chaos, light and darkness. Nwada played a crucial role in this conflict, demonstrating his leadership and valor. The Role of Luff In the midst of the Fomorian threat, another significant figure emerged, Luff, a god associated with many skills and often referred to as Luff of the Long Arm. Recognizing Luffa's potential, Nwada voluntarily stepped down to allow him to lead the Tuata de Danan. This act of humility and wisdom underscores Nwada's dedication to the greater good of his people. Nwada's Legacy Nwada's legacy is multifaceted, encompassing themes of kingship, sacrifice, and resilience. His silver hand symbolizes the integration of human ingenuity and divine intervention, while his willingness to step aside for Luff reflects the values of humility and foresight. Nwada's story has endured through the ages, resonating with the cultural and spiritual ethos of Ireland. Symbolism and Cultural Impact Nwada's tale is rich in symbolism, reflecting the values and beliefs of ancient Irish society. His silver hand represents the fusion of technology and magic, the ability to overcome adversity, and the importance of healing. The requirement for a king to be physically whole signifies the connection between the ruler's body and the health of the land. In addition, Nwada's interactions with other deities and characters highlight the importance of community and collective well-being. His willingness to abdicate for the sake of his people illustrates the selflessness expected of a true leader. Nwada in modern culture Nwada's influence extends beyond ancient mythology into modern culture. He has appeared in various literary works, films, and other media, often reimagined to fit contemporary narratives while retaining his core characteristics. His story continues to inspire themes of resilience, leadership, and the interplay between human and divine. Conclusion Nwada, with his silver hand and storied past, remains a quintessential figure in Irish mythology. His journey from a revered king to a fallen hero and back to a restored leader encapsulates the timeless themes of sacrifice, resilience, and the pursuit of wholeness. Through his narrative, Nwada embodies the enduring spirit of the Tuata de Danan and the rich cultural heritage of Ireland. Appendix, Major Sources and Texts Lebo Gabala Eren, The Book of Invasions, a medieval Irish text that recounts the mythical history of Ireland, including the tales of the two Arta de Danan and their encounters with other races. Cath Mage Twid, The Battle of Mag Twid, two major texts detail the first and second battles of Mag Twid, providing a comprehensive account of Nwada's role and the struggles of the two Arta de Danan. The Mabinogen, while primarily a collection of Welsh tales, some overlapping themes and characters reflect the broader Celtic mythological context, including figures akin to Nwada. Early Irish sagas and annals, various sagas and annals, such as the Hanals of the Four Masters, offer insights into the mythological and historical narratives that shaped Nwada's legend. Scholarly Interpretations Marie-Louise Shostet's Gods and Heroes of the Celts, this work provides a detailed analysis of Celtic deities, including Nwada, and explores their roles and significance within the broader Celtic pantheon. John Carey's A Single Ray of the Sun, this book delves into the cosmology and mythological traditions of early Ireland, offering interpretations of Nwada's story within the context of Irish belief systems. 
Proinshar's Makkana's Celtic Mythology, Makkana's work is a comprehensive guide to Celtic myths and legends, including detailed discussions of the two Arta de Danan and Noada's place among them. Interpretative Themes Sovereignty and Kingship, Noada's story is often interpreted through the lens of kingship and the sacred nature of rulership in ancient Ireland. His physical integrity and the symbolism of his silver hand are central to understanding these themes. Resilience and Restoration, the themes of injury, healing, and restoration in Nwada's narrative highlight the importance of resilience and the belief in miraculous recovery. Community and Leadership, Nwada's interactions with other characters, especially his decision to step aside for Luff, underscore the values of community, collective well-being, and selfless leadership. Symbolism of the hand, the motif of the hand, particularly in its silver and later restored form, is a powerful symbol of strength, skill, and divine intervention. Artistic representations. Nwada's image has been immortalized in various forms of art, from medieval manuscripts to modern illustrations. His silver hand, often depicted as a blend of metal and organic forms, serves as a potent visual symbol of his character. These artistic representations continue to evolve, reflecting contemporary interpretations of his myth. Mananan Mac Lur. The name Mananan Mac Lur is rich with meaning. Mananan is believed to derive from the Isle of Man, an island in the Irish Sea, which he is often associated with. Mac Lur translates to son of the sea, indicating his divine heritage. Lur, or Lur, his father, is another sea deity, though less prominently featured in myths. The role of Mananan Mac Lur in mythology. Mananan Mac Lur occupies a unique position in Irish mythology. He is primarily known as the god of the sea, but his influence extends beyond the watery realms. He is a figure of immense wisdom, magic, and mystery. Unlike many gods who are tied to specific locations or tribes, Mananan's domain is the ever-changing, boundaryless sea, symbolizing his liminality and fluid nature. Protector and Guide Mananan is often depicted as a guardian and a guide. One of his primary roles is to protect the two Arta de Danan, a race of godlike people in Irish mythology. After the two Arta de Danan were defeated by the Milesians and retreated into the other world, Mananan took on the role of their protector. He used his magical powers to shroud their domain, making it invisible to mortals. He is also known for guiding souls to the afterlife. Mananan's role as a psychopomp, a guide for the dead, is a testament to his connection with the other world, a realm of spirits and deities. Master of Magic and Illusion Mananan is renowned for his magical abilities. He possesses several magical items, the most famous being the Cloak of Invisibility, Feth Fiada, and the Crane Bag, which contained various magical treasures. His mastery over illusion and transformation is a recurring theme in his stories. Mananan could change his appearance at will, a skill he often used to test or aid heroes. The Tragic Hero, His Mortal Life and Death in some tales, Mananan is portrayed as a mortal king who later achieves godhood. This duality adds depth to his character. His mortal aspects highlight themes of heroism, sacrifice, and the quest for immortality. Stories like The Voyage of Bran depict Mananan interacting with mortals, bestowing wisdom, and sometimes foretelling their destinies. Mananan in the Mythological Cycle the mythological cycle of Irish mythology contains many references to Manan and Mac Lur. These stories illustrate his multifaceted nature and his interactions with other deities and heroes. The Voyage of Bran One of the most famous stories involving Manannan is The Voyage of Bran. In this tale, Bran Mac Febale embarks on a journey to the other world after encountering a mysterious woman who sings of its wonders. During his voyage, Bran meets Mananan, who reveals the mysteries of the other world and prophesies about the future. Mananan's role in this story is as a guide and a seer, emphasizing his deep connection to the supernatural and his wisdom. The Dream of Ingus 
In the dream of Ingus, Mananan aids the god Ingus in finding his love, Kaya Ibormyth. Using his magical abilities, Mananan helps Ingus locate Kaya, who transforms into a swan every other year. Mananan's involvement in this love story highlights his benevolent nature and his willingness to assist other gods. The Lebhagabala Irian, Book of Invasions. The Lebhagabala Irian, or Book of Invasions, is a pseudo historical account of the various peoples who settled in Ireland. In this text, Mananan is depicted as a ruler of the Otherworld and a protector of the Tuatha de Danann. His role in this text underscores his importance as a cultural hero and a divine guardian. Symbols and Attributes Mananan Makla is associated with several symbols and magical items that reflect his divine attributes. The Cloak of Invisibility, this magical cloak allowed Mananan to move unseen, symbolizing his mastery over illusion and his connection to the other world. The Crane Bag, this bag contained a variety of magical treasures and artifacts, representing Mananan's role as a keeper of secrets and wisdom. The Wave Sweeper, Mananan's magical boat, which could travel without the need for oars or sails, symbolizing his dominion over the sea and his ability to traverse between worlds. The Horse in Bar, a magical horse that could traverse both land and sea, reflecting Mananan's fluidity and his role as a guide across realms. Mananan in Modern Culture Mananan Mac Lur's legacy extends beyond ancient mythology into modern culture. His figure appears in various forms of media, from literature to video games, often as a symbol of the mysterious and powerful sea deity. Literature and Arts Mananan has inspired countless works of literature and art. His stories have been retold in modern novels, poems, and plays. Authors like W.B. Yeats and James Stevens have drawn upon Mananan's mythos, weaving elements of his character into their works to explore themes of mysticism and the supernatural. Video Games and Popular Media In video games, Mananan often appears as a powerful entity or a quest giver. His character embodies the archetype of the wise and enigmatic guide, offering players insight and magical assistance. This modern portrayal continues to reinforce his traditional attributes of wisdom and magical prowess. Festivals and Cultural Celebrations In regions like the Isle of Man, Mananan is celebrated in festivals and cultural events. These celebrations honor his role as a guardian of the island and its people, reflecting the enduring cultural significance of this ancient deity. Interpretations and Symbolism Manan and Makler can be interpreted through various lenses, each offering insights into his complex character. The liminal deity, as a god of the sea, Mananan embodies the concept of liminality, the threshold between worlds. The sea itself is a liminal space, constantly changing and existing between land and sky. Mananan's dominion over this space symbolizes his role as a mediator between the mortal world and the other world. The trickster and teacher, Mananan's use of illusion and transformation aligns him with the archetype of the trickster. However, unlike many tricksters who deceive for selfish reasons, Mananan's tricks often serve to teach or protect. This duality showcases his wisdom and his protective nature. The psychopomp, Mananan's role in guiding souls to the afterlife underscores his deep connection to the cycle of life and death. This aspect of his character highlights themes of transition and the journey of the soul, reinforcing his status as a god of profound mysteries. Angus 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 is one of the Tuatha de Danann, a race of supernatural beings who were believed to inhabit Ireland before the arrival of the Milesians, the ancestors of the Irish people. He is the son of the Dagda, one of the chief deities of the Tuatha de Danann, and Bowen, the goddess of the river Boyne. This lineage places Angus among the most influential and revered gods in Irish mythology. Angus is also associated with Brigid, another significant deity in Irish lore, although their exact relationship varies across different sources. In some tales, Angus and Brigid are considered to be closely connected, while in others, 
their relationship is more complex and indirect. Attributes and Symbols Angus is primarily known as the god of love, youth, and poetic inspiration. His attributes are often linked to beauty, music, and enchantment. He is depicted as a youthful and handsome deity, embodying the ideal of eternal youth and romantic allure. His symbols include the swan, which represents his association with love and beauty, and the harp, a symbol of his connection to music and poetry. The Dream of Angus One of the most famous stories about Angus is the Dream of Angus, or Eilinge Angus. According to this tale, Angus dreams of a beautiful maiden whom he immediately falls in love with. He becomes obsessed with finding her, and after much searching, he discovers that she is the daughter of the druid of the land of the dead. This story highlights Angus's role as a romantic figure and his quest for true love, a theme that resonates deeply within the context of Celtic mythology. In this narrative, the dream serves as a powerful motif, symbolizing the idea of unattainable or idealized love. Angus's pursuit of the maiden underscores his passionate nature and the lengths he will go to achieve his desires. The story also reflects the broader theme of the otherworldly or supernatural in Irish folklore, emphasizing the idea that love and beauty are often intertwined with magical and mystical elements. The Brideog or Little Brigid Another significant myth involving Angus is the story of the Brideog, or the Little Brigid. In this tale, Angus falls in love with a mortal woman named Brigid, who is known for her beauty and grace. Despite the challenges and obstacles they face, their love endures, and they eventually marry. This story highlights the theme of love transcending boundaries, both social and supernatural, and reinforces Angus's role as a deity who bridges the gap between the mortal and divine realms. Angus and the Magical Swan Angus's connection to swans is a recurring motif in Irish mythology. In one tale, Angus is transformed into a swan along with his beloved, and they spend a period of time together in this form. This transformation emphasizes the fluidity of identity and the idea that love can transcend physical forms. The swan is also associated with the concept of rebirth and transformation, further enhancing Angus's role as a deity of change and renewal. The Role of Angus in the Pantheon as a member of the Tuatha de Danann, Angus holds a significant place in the pantheon of Irish gods. His role as a god of love and youth complements the attributes of other deities within this mythological framework. For instance, the Dagda, his father, is often associated with fertility, abundance, and protection, while Brigid, his possible sister or lover, is linked to poetry, healing, and craftsmanship. Angus's influence extends beyond mere romantic pursuits, he is also seen as a source of inspiration for poets and musicians. His connection to the arts highlights the importance of creativity and artistic expression in Celtic culture. In this sense, Angus embodies the ideal of the inspired artist, driven by a divine force that transcends ordinary human experience. Cultural Significance Angus's stories and attributes reflect broader themes within Irish mythology and Celtic culture. His association with love and beauty underscores the value placed on these qualities in ancient Irish society. The tales of Angus also reveal the complex interplay between the mortal and divine realms, illustrating how supernatural beings were believed to influence and interact with the human world. The myths surrounding Angus also emphasize the importance of dreams and visions in Celtic spirituality. Dreams were often seen as a means of communication with the divine, and Angus's experiences highlight the role of the supernatural in guiding and shaping human experiences. This connection between the divine and the dream world is a recurring theme in Irish folklore and reflects the belief that the gods were intimately involved in the lives of mortals. Dhanu Danu's origins are somewhat obscure, as much of what is known about her comes from later texts and interpretations of earlier oral traditions. She is often considered a primordial goddess, representing the ancient and elemental forces of nature. 
Her name is thought to be derived from the Proto-Indo-European root Dhanu, which signifies river or flowing, hinting at her deep connection to water and fertility. In the mythological context, Dhanu is primarily associated with the Tuata de Danan, a race of deities and supernatural beings who were considered the ancestors of the Irish people. The Tuata de Danan, whose name translates to people of the goddess Dhanu, are portrayed as possessing extraordinary powers and knowledge. They are often depicted as the ruling deities of the pre-Christian Irish pantheon, embodying the idealized qualities of wisdom, magic, and sovereignty. Mythological Context Danu's role within the Tuata de Danan is somewhat enigmatic, as she does not feature prominently in the surviving mythological texts. However, her influence is pervasive. She is often depicted as the mother or grandmother of the Tuata de Danan, symbolizing their divine heritage and connection to the land. The most detailed accounts of the Tuata de Danan's mythology come from texts such as the Lebo Gabala Eren, Book of Invasions, and the mythological cycle of Irish literature. These sources recount how the Tuata de Danan arrived in Ireland, their battles with other supernatural races, and their eventual retreat into the other world. While Danu herself does not always appear directly in these narratives, her presence is felt through her progeny and the land they inhabit. Symbolism and Attributes Danu is often associated with several key symbols and attributes. Her connection to rivers and water highlights her role as a goddess of fertility and abundance. In many cultures, water is seen as a life-giving force, and Danu's association with this element underscores her importance in sustaining and nurturing life. Her role as a mother goddess further emphasizes her connection to the earth and fertility. In ancient Celtic societies, the earth was often personified as a nurturing mother, providing sustenance and support. Danu's maternal aspect links her to agricultural fertility, the growth of crops, and the prosperity of the community. Additionally, Danu's association with the cosmic order reflects her role in maintaining balance and harmony in the natural world. The Tuata de Danan, as her descendants, are often depicted as embodying qualities of wisdom and magic, suggesting that Danu's influence extends beyond the physical realm into the spiritual and mystical dimensions. Cult and Worship While direct evidence of Danu's worship is sparse, her significance is inferred from the reverence shown to her through the Tuata de Danan. Her influence can be seen in the sacred landscapes and natural features associated with the Tuata. In ancient Ireland, certain rivers, mountains, and other geographical features were considered sacred and were often linked to divine beings. Danu's name is preserved in place names and geographical features, indicating her enduring presence in the cultural memory of the Irish people. The concept of sacred landscapes is central to Celtic spirituality. The belief in the land as a living entity, imbued with divine presence, reflects the deep respect and reverence for nature that characterized ancient Celtic religions. Danu's association with these sacred sites reinforces her role as a vital and omnipresent force in the natural world. Legacy and Modern Interpretation Danu's legacy continues to influence modern interpretations of Celtic mythology and neo-pagan practices. In contemporary spiritual practices, particularly those that draw on ancient Celtic traditions, Danu is often invoked as a symbol of feminine divine power, fertility, and connection to the natural world. Her role as a nurturing and protective deity resonates with modern spiritual seekers who seek to reconnect with the rhythms of nature and the cycles of life. Modern neo-pagan and druidic traditions often celebrate Danu as a central figure in rituals and ceremonies. Her name and attributes are invoked in various forms of worship and spiritual practice, reflecting the enduring appeal of her archetype as a mother goddess and guardian of the land. This contemporary revival of interest in Danu and other Celtic deities demonstrates the lasting impact of ancient myths and the ways in which they continue to inspire and shape modern spiritual practices. Bela Bela is a member of the Fomorians, 
a race of supernatural beings often depicted as antagonistic giants or dark gods who oppose the more benevolent Tuata de Danan. The Fomorians are described as early inhabitants of Ireland who are typically in conflict with the Tuata de Danan, the latter being the deities and heroes of Irish mythology. According to the mythology, Bela is the son of the Fomorian king, Bela, and the grandson of the primordial deity, Sickle. His lineage places him among the ancient giants and dark forces of Ireland. Bela's family is often portrayed as a malign force that contrasts with the more heroic and noble Tuata de Danan. Physical Description and Attributes Bela is most famously known for his single, destructive eye. This eye is said to possess a destructive power that can wreak havoc upon anyone who looks into it. The eye is described in different sources as being so potent that it can kill or cause destruction simply by being opened. In some accounts, it is referred to as a death eye or Baylor's eye. The eye's power is a central feature of Baylor's character. When he is enraged or threatened, he can open this eye, unleashing a devastating beam of energy or influence. In contrast, when the eye is closed, it remains dormant and harmless. This characteristic makes Bela both a terrifying and enigmatic figure, embodying the idea of a monstrous power that is both controlled and uncontrollable. Bela's role in Irish mythology The Cattle Raid of Cooley One of the most significant stories involving Bela is the tale of the Cattle Raid of Cooley, Tyne Bo Quaelnge. This epic narrative describes the conflict between the armies of Connaught and Ulster over a prized brown bull. Baylor's involvement is more indirect in this story, but his legacy and influence are crucial in the broader context of the mythological cycle. In the Tyne Bo Quaonge, Baylor's daughter, Eatin, plays a role in the narrative, though she is not directly associated with the main plot. The tale demonstrates how Baylor's legacy and the conflicts of the Fomorians continue to affect the lives of the two Arta de Danan and their adversaries. Baylor's influence persists through his descendants and the lingering effects of his actions. The Battle of Mag Twid The Battle of Mag Twid is perhaps the most critical mythological event involving Baylor. This battle is a central conflict between the two Arta de Danan and the Fomorians. Baylor is depicted as a primary antagonist in this battle, leading the Fomorian forces against the two Arta de Danan. According to the myths, Bela and his army are defeated by the Tuata de Danan led by the hero Luff. Luff, a member of the Tuata de Danan, is often portrayed as a skilled warrior and a champion of light. The battle is a climactic moment in the mythology, symbolizing the triumph of the forces of light and order over the chaotic and dark powers of the Fomorians. The story of Bela's death is particularly striking. During the battle, Luff confronts Bela and uses his own magical abilities to counteract the destructive power of Bela's eye. In a dramatic turn of events, Luff throws a spear or stone, accounts vary, into Bela's eye, causing it to burst and thereby defeating the giant. This act symbolizes the overcoming of darkness and chaos by light and order. The Prophecy and Bela's Downfall Another important aspect of Baylor's story is the prophecy surrounding his downfall. According to the mythological accounts, Baylor was warned that he would be killed by his own grandchild. This prophecy is a key element in the narrative of his demise. Baylor's daughter, Sickle, gives birth to Luff, the hero who ultimately fulfills the prophecy. This storyline highlights themes of fate and inevitability that are common in Irish mythology. Despite Baylor's attempts to prevent the prophecy from coming true, the forces of destiny align to ensure that he meets his foretold end. Symbolism and Themes Baylor's character and his story are rich with symbolism and thematic elements. His single eye represents both the destructive potential of unchecked power and the idea of a force that can bring about chaos and disorder. The eye, being both a tool of destruction and a symbol of vulnerability, underscores the dual nature of power in mythology. Baylor's defeat at the hands of Luff also carries significant thematic weight. 
It represents the victory of light and order over darkness and chaos, a common theme in mythological narratives across cultures. The battle between the two Arta de Danan and the Fomorians can be seen as an allegory for the struggle between constructive and destructive forces within the world. Bela in later traditions In later Irish folklore and literary traditions, Bela's story and character have influenced various works and adaptations. His image as a powerful giant with a single, devastating eye has persisted in literature, art, and popular culture. The figure of Bela also resonates with similar characters in other mythologies. For example, the Greek mythological figure of Polyphemus, the Cyclops, shares some similarities with Bela, particularly in terms of his giant stature and singular eye. These comparisons highlight how different mythological traditions explore similar themes through their characters. Eriu Eriu is one of the three goddesses known collectively as the Tirain or Dera, who personify the land of Ireland. The other two goddesses are Banba and Fodla. These three deities are often referred to as the mothers of the Irish. Their names are invoked in various contexts, especially in poetry and historical narratives, as symbols of the land's fertility and divine protection. The origins of Eriu are deeply rooted in pre-Christian Irish beliefs. She is associated with the two Arta de Danan, a race of deities who were believed to have inhabited Ireland before the arrival of the Celts. According to mythological texts, the two Arta de Danan were a group of supernatural beings with extraordinary powers who ruled Ireland during the mythical age. Mythological Significance In Irish mythology, Eriu is often depicted as a powerful and wise figure, embodying the essence of the land she represents. Her role is central to several mythological stories, particularly those related to the early history and settlement of Ireland. One of the most notable myths involving Eriu is her interaction with the Milesians, the mythical ancestors of the Irish people. According to the Lebo Gabalo Eren, the Book of Invasions, a medieval text that chronicles the various invasions and settlements of Ireland, Eriu, along with her sisters Bamba and Fodler, welcomed the Milesians when they arrived in Ireland. The Milesians were the last group of invaders in this mythological narrative, and their arrival marked the end of the reign of the two Arta de Danan. Eriu and her sisters were said to have made a pact with the Milesians, agreeing that the new settlers would become the rightful rulers of Ireland in exchange for acknowledging the presence and importance of the goddesses. In the myth, Eriu asked that the island be named after her, which was honored by the Milesians. Thus, Eriu's name became synonymous with the land itself, and Ireland is still known as Era in the Irish language. Symbolism and Attributes Eriu is often associated with fertility, abundance, and the natural cycles of the land. As a goddess of the land, she symbolizes the richness and potential of Ireland's soil, which is crucial for agriculture and sustenance. Her attributes include nurturing qualities, which emphasize her role in ensuring the prosperity and well-being of the land and its inhabitants. In addition to her association with fertility, Eriu is also linked to the concept of sovereignty. In many Celtic traditions, the land was considered a living entity, and the sovereignty of the land was closely tied to the legitimacy of the ruler. Eriu, as a personification of the land, was seen as a guardian of this sovereignty. The health and stability of the land were believed to reflect the divine favor of the goddess. Eriu and the other goddesses Eriu's relationship with her sisters Bamba and Fodler is particularly significant in understanding her role in mythology. These three goddesses are often mentioned together, and their collective presence emphasizes the importance of the land in Irish cultural and spiritual life. Each of the three goddesses had her own domain and aspects associated with the land. While Eriu is primarily linked to the overall abundance and fertility of Ireland, Banba and Fodler also had their own attributes and areas of influence. Together, they represented a comprehensive embodiment of the land's various aspects. The naming of Ireland after Eriu and the acknowledgement of the other goddesses in myths reflect a complex relationship between the divine and the natural world. 
This relationship highlights the deep reverence the ancient Irish had for their land and its spiritual significance. Eriu in historical and cultural context. Eriu's influence extends beyond mythological stories and into the historical and cultural identity of Ireland. The goddess's name has persisted in various forms throughout Irish history and literature. For example, the name Era is used as the Irish name for Ireland, and it carries with it the legacy of Eriu's divine connection to the land. In medieval literature and poetry, Eriu is often invoked as a symbol of national pride and cultural heritage. Her name and attributes are used to evoke a sense of connection to the land and its ancient traditions. This connection is particularly evident in works that celebrate Ireland's rich mythological past and the enduring presence of its ancient deities. Eriu's influence is also seen in the way Irish identity has been shaped by mythology and folklore. The goddess represents not only the physical land of Ireland, but also the spiritual and cultural values associated with it. Her role in the myths of the two Arta de Danan and the Milesians reflects a broader narrative of cultural continuity and the integration of ancient beliefs into the fabric of Irish identity. Eriu in modern interpretations. In contemporary times, Eriu's legacy continues to inspire interest and reverence. Modern interpretations of Irish mythology often explore her significance in the context of environmentalism, cultural preservation, and spiritual practice. The goddess's association with fertility and the land resonates with contemporary concerns about ecological sustainability and the importance of maintaining a respectful relationship with nature. Modern neo-pagan and druidic practices often include reverence for Eriu and other deities of the Tuatha de Danann. These practices draw on the ancient myths and legends to create a spiritual connection with the land and its history. Eriu's role as a guardian of the land and a symbol of abundance serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring relationship between people and the natural world. Thanks for joining us on this mystical journey through Irish folklore. If you enjoyed exploring the gods and legends that shape Ireland's rich heritage, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more enchanting tales. Share your favorite myth or god in the comments below, we'd love to hear your thoughts. For exclusive content and updates, follow us on social media. Until next time, may the ancient gods watch over you and your path be filled with magic and wonder. Slang go foil, and see you in our next video.